What's up, everybody? Tyler Caton here with Weld.com. Today, we're going to be talking about some TIG welder. Now, what we're going to get into is talking about why we should pepper material. So we're going to be welding over some dirty material, showing you how that affects the weld pool and the total outcome of the weld. Why we should prep and clean our filler rod and make sure it's stored properly. And why you should maybe, you know, make sure your PPE, like your gloves, are clean and not a mess while you're welding so that way your weld doesn't get contaminated. Let me get geared up and let's get into it. Here's the material I gathered and made into coupons for today's video. Here on the right side, we have our dirty material. Now, I didn't do any cleaning prep wise. The only thing I really did was clean up the edges and get rid of any burrs so I don't cut my hand or slice in my gloves while handling the material. So the aluminum we have here is just some eighth inch coupons I cut from some material we had sitting outside in the scrap bin. Uh, it's pretty water soaked because we've been getting a lot of rain. You can also see how grimy it is and you can see a little bit of oil on it in material. I'm not going to wipe these down before welding like I typically would with aluminum. Our next piece, I just have some two inch square tubing. As you can see, there's all the mill scale still on it. We're going to try to run a bead right over that. So you can see the issues with not grinding off your mill scale while trying to run a bead over it. There are some processes that allow you to get away with that but now with TIG welding. Next, I took what I think looks like two pieces of pizza and I created a T-joint. And you can see there's a little bit of rust on there, a little bit of scale. And you can see there's a heat effect on the backside. I did run a practice bead on this prior to setting up, just see how it would run and get my machine set up. But we're gonna use this fresh side. Now, if we come over to the left side here, we have all of my prepped clean material. Uh, first, I just have two quarter inch plates here. I just cleaned them up with a 60 grit sanding belt on our belt sander just to get down to nice white bare metal, which should give us a really nice clean welding surface area. Next, I have the two inch square tubing. Same thing as before, cut from the same stock. Also did, same thing, I just cleaned it up on the belt sander a little bit. All of our welding areas that were down to that nice clean white base metal. And we should see a massive difference between the two pieces. For our aluminum, I have the eighth inch by four inch by two inch coupons. I didn't make these. I bought these from a company that sell them online. Now, just for fun, I did find this. I know it looks like it's stainless, but it actually is carbon steel. It's just been brushed. It'll definitely be a fun experiment to run. Now, it is only 16th, so it's going to be a little bit thinner than some of the materials work with today. But... Just to see the difference with welding on nice brushed or polished materials in comparison to, you know, even just stuff that you hand grind. Let's take a look at our machine today. We're going to have the machine on DC electronegative. That means that our torch is hooked into our negative side and that our ground clamp is hooked into our positive side. Now I do have the machine set to DC since it does have an AC function. I'm just gonna set the machine here at 130 amps because we are welding in high frequency and we have the comfort of sitting down and using a foot pedal. I'm able to really dial in and control my heat with that foot pedal. I mean, you could max the machine out 220 amps and as long as you have good control and can read your puddle pretty well, you'd be pretty fine welding some pretty thin stuff. First, I just wanna start with the plate set up as a T-joint. Now, like I said before, I did run a test bead on it. I did one with wire and without wire. And the reason I say that is because I'm using 70S-2 wire. And while that does have some deoxidizers and scavengers in it, just with the fusion weld alone, we don't get that help from our film material. And that can definitely cause more issues, such as porosity or undercut, or the puddle might just not flow well and fight us the entire time we're trying to weld the joint. For our torch setup, I'm using a number 12 narrow cup. I really like these for inside corners. That way I don't have to have a ton of stick out. Now for our tungsten, I'm using a 332 sized CK Worldwide laser tungsten. All right, so I have to apologize in advance. My hand got in the way of the arc shot, but I wanted to stay true to what we were welding. So I am just gonna show you the finished weld. Now, this didn't turn out bad at all. I thought it was gonna be much worse. 
we still got a really nice shiny weld so our filling material is definitely doing its job here now let's run a fusion weld over this i want to see what's going to happen if we just try to run a bead without having the access to our deoxidizer scavengers from our filling material and just like magic the weld appears again sorry about the cam work on this bead specifically now surprisingly the fusion weld doesn't really look that bad at all the puddle was fighting me a little bit as i was trying to burn through some of that rust but i honestly thought it was gonna be a lot worse just sucking some of that stuff into our weld pool so i am honestly surprised that it wasn't worse i just don't think that you know this plate's gross enough you know we still got some you know okay welds out of it so um if we uh, just put a little bit of oil on it, you know, the, you know, you're working with cutting oil and stuff in the shop all the time. So, what if we just get this a little oily? Let's do some science. This is gross and difficult. Here's a look at the finished bead from welding over all that oil. You can see all the contamination around and inside the weldment. And in the arc shot, you could see it fluttering and how bad the puddle was fighting me to stay flowing. You can even see undercut there on our edges and it really goes to show that it's important you don't just pick pieces up. You know, if you're cutting them in a saw or you're drilling something, make sure you wipe and clean that material off if you're going to be running a bead over it because it's it's going to come out looking like this. And you really don't want to do that and you don't want to pick up bad habits. So here's that square tubing that we're going to be welding with the mill scale on it. I just want to show you how poor the weld quality is on a finished weldment and how difficult it is to weld over mill scale when we're TIG welding. Now I did tack it up off camera and even just like getting a close up look here on the tack, you can see some of that contamination from that mill scale getting sucked into our weld pool. Let's check out an arc shot running right across the flat here. Here's the result of welding straight over a mill scale. First off, the bead itself fought me the entire time I was trying to run it. You can see in the weldment what the scavengers tried to bring out and float to the surface, but didn't really work that well. We have some undercut and the bead itself just looks terrible aesthetically and it'll more than likely fail under stress. Now, with the arc shot that you just saw, you could see how much I was struggling to just keep a nice stable puddle. You could see all the contamination just getting sucked right into the weld pool. You could see in the arc shot alone how much more control I had over my puddle and what I was doing. I mean, just look at the difference in the bead compared to our other plate and some of our other materials. We have a really nice shiny looking bead. We have a nice even stack of dimes. Ideally, this is what you're gonna be looking for. And again, I just cleaned this up on the 60 grit sanding belt and that made a world of difference in comparison to welding on our other dirty material. Now, I ran this bead off camera this is our square tubing set up the same way as we had the square tubing with the mill scale. As soon as you look at this finished bead, you can see the contrast between welding on bare metal versus trying to fight and weld over the mill scale. We have no undercut on either side of the leg. 
we have a nice shiny bead. You can see there's no contamination inside of the weldment. And you can obviously tell it didn't fight me at all because you can see how even our bead is. So I have that brushed piece here. It was just a drop from our laser. Uh, a lot of time we'll be working with materials that are brushed or polished to a certain finish. And certain finishes are a lot easier to weld on because they're a lot cleaner than some other things you get and require less prep. This, I just wiped down with some alcohol to get some grime on it from it laying around the shop. I'm just gonna run a quick little padded bead over top of it just to show you. Now, it is a 16th as opposed to some of our other materials I've been welding today. I'm not changing my tungsten. Typically, when I drop down to a thin material like this, I drop down to a 16th tungsten. I weld at things as thin as 19 thou and use an 040 tungsten for that. So it just depends on the application, but it'll be fine and we'll make do. So I just did the uh, brush plate here. I know it's a little thin, so it's a little different to weld, but no contamination, still pretty shiny weld. I also want to know how important it is. I know we talked about some contamination in filler material, some really dirty gloves. You might get stuff on your filler. If you don't keep your uh, filler stored in any kind of like rod storage, that makes a huge difference. But the other thing is, I uh, suppose if we were stainless and like the carbon wires, see how the wire itself is oxidized. So if you don't snip that off and you start your weld, you're literally shoving oxidized material right in the weld pool, which obviously is going to cause some issues. So I always just keep a pair of snips or a pair of pliers nearby all my equipment and just start fresh. All right, I'm gonna get the aluminum set up, the machine set up for aluminum, and then we're gonna weld our aluminum coupons. Right. Now that we're set up for doing aluminum, I switched over to a number five cup. Oh, we're using a collet body. Same tungsten on 332 laser tungsten. Uh, it's just a fresh piece. Right, the machine set to AC, uh, 180 on the frequency, because I'm gonna be setting up outside corner joints, that way you have a nice tight arc on that. And then 60 on the balance. And then as far as our material goes, I cut these coupons from scrap we lay outside. They're four inch piece coupons, eighth inch thickness. Uh, same with the coupons that I have. These I actually ordered uh, from a company that makes them and sells uh, coupons. So these are pretty clean. They look like they were sheared in the factory. So I just clean them up the edges a little bit on the belt sander just for fit up reasons. And then I wipe them down with a rag and alcohol. Uh, you can also use acetone, but those pieces should be pretty clean and ready to go. So let me get this tacked up. So here's the piece all tacked up, fit up. I'm curious myself how the result of this is gonna be. I've never welded aluminum this dirty. I'm usually pretty picky about how clean it is. I mean, even my rods, I wipe all of that down. I actually have a pair of gloves that I only use for welding aluminum. No grinding, no handling of the material. That way it doesn't get contaminated. Today we're breaking that rule, but let's just see how it goes. Now, I'm surprised. I thought this was going to fight me a lot more. Typically, I wipe my stuff down with dentured alcohol or acetone. I didn't even prep this. It's been sitting outside, getting soaked by rain. But you can see we have a pretty consistent bead here. But then in this spot here, you can see that it kind of fought me a little bit and became really consistent. And I mean, even the arc shot, you could see some of the spots where it came out of whack. And then even over here a little bit. I thought it was going to pop more. I thought I was going to have pinholes. I thought it was going to pop up and destroy my tungsten just from some porosity issues. But all in all, I'm actually really surprised. And the cleaning action, you know, did a lot of work here.
I took the clean pieces from my coupons and I just made two right angles and I put them all together like they were a piece of square tubing essentially. But I ran the two outside corners here and I did two different dab patterns and they came out pretty clean. I did mess it up a little bit though on the coupons. You can see that one side's a little fatter and flat and then same thing with the opposite side on that offset. I wanna thank everyone for watching the video. Make sure you hit that like button, make sure you subscribe. If you have any questions about the video, make sure you comment down below. And if you wanna see anything featured on future videos, you can DM us, uh, you can go on the forums. And the new thing that you can do is you can go on the new Weld app. You can download that in the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. And there you'll be able to post content, share content with people, bounce ideas off each other, and all Weld.com's educational videos will be on the app for your viewing pleasure. Until next time.